Hi, and welcome to the From Scratch with Love Cinco de Mayo special. And for our Spanish-speaking audience, Hola a todos. Bienvenidos al especial Cinco de Mayo. A salud. I hope you like this one. All right, so the first thing we have to do is get our bacon down for our quesadillas. Uh, this is just three strips of applewood bacon. Real quick here, I've got my griddle on very, very hot. And I've got a pot of vegetable oil over there heating up. And once that gets to 350, we are going to drop in our tortilla chips, which we will get to here momentarily. I'm gonna go ahead and speed through the rest of this footage and I'll catch you on the other side. All right, so we've gone over chicken prep on this show before. I've defrosted these, taken them out, put them in a uh, safe container. And I'm just gonna dust them here with some all-purpose dust seasoning. And that's all we're gonna do here. Uh, later, I'm gonna add some ancho chili powder to these before we grill them. You wanna let them sit in this seasoning for anywhere between five and 10 minutes uh, before you throw these on the grill at room temperature. Don't worry about it. There's enough salt in here to kill anything. Okay, let's move on to our tortillas. And here they are. This is pretty easy. These are just uh, corn tortillas, white corn tortillas uh, from the grocery store. They're about, you know, about a dollar per package. Uh, so one package of these typically will get you two to three bags worth of pretty large uh, tortilla chips. So we're gonna do these and throw them on the grill and I will see you here shortly. All right, like I said before, we're gonna put these on the griddle. Now, while I'm doing this here, you have to dry these out. Uh, so I'm gonna speed this up uh, and I'm doing this because I didn't have time to let these sit out overnight and get kind of stale. Because you want them dry, but so they're still pliable. All right, kind of like a, like a, almost a stiff cardboard. Um, and you'll see they'll start to curl up here on your hot surface. You can also do this in a low oven. Um, and then once these are dry, we are gonna drop them right into that hot oil after it comes up to temp. And it looks like uh, it is there. So I got my spider, uh, dropping them in there. The oil uh, should be anywhere between 325 and 350. And you don't want to get these too dark. Uh, so you want to use one, uh, like a, a fresh batch of vegetable oil or canola. All right, see you in a second. And those are our finished chips. All right, so we can turn our attention to our chicken now. Now I've gone over to my Smoke Hollow 4-in-1 Pro Series, and this is the gas side. So we've got this really, really ripping hot, around 700 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, I've got my chicken on there, and you see the ancho dust uh, I put on there before. Um, and you just let these down. I've spit this up about 600%, because uh, this does take quite a bit of time. These are chicken tenders, and you're going to want to cook these at this temperature for anywhere between, I don't know, three to four minutes. Um, they won't be completely done at that point, by the way. They will be about 125 degrees internally. But remember, we are putting these on quesadillas, uh, so they're gonna continue to cook. And if you cook them all the way through first on the grill, they're gonna be dry and chalky. And how many times have you gone to a Mexican restaurant or any restaurant really, had a quesadilla, and the chicken tasted like it was not only out of a can, but uh, like you could uh, write your math homework with it? Well, we're gonna prevent that today. All right, I'm just gonna zip through this. You'll notice that chicken is just a little pink inside, and that's fine. Remember, these are gonna continue to cook and they won't dry out either. So the first one is, uh, this is for my wife. She doesn't like really spicy things, so that's some bacon and some Monterey Jack cheese. We'll throw that on the griddle. Second one's for me, this is a Fresno chili. I like these a lot. Uh, they're pretty mild, but they give a nice flavor to, to things and they don't burn your mouth out. Uh, some chicken there and some Monterey Jack and a little chive, I like that. And the third one here uh, is gonna be chicken, bacon, uh, some pickled jalapenos. I love pickled jalapenos. Uh, some more chive and uh, throw it on the griddle. And we'll go over to the griddle. Uh, you can see I've got all three of them here and I've already cooked them on the first side. And you see the brown there, the, the little bubbly bits. That's what you're looking for. Uh, the reason you're gonna wanna use a griddle here or a really, really hot cast iron pan is to get them crispy and also finish cooking everything else in the middle uh, so it doesn't burn or you know, they get dried out. But uh, you're gonna cook them anywhere between three to four minutes per side. Uh, don't worry, if they're on a dry griddle or a dry cast iron, 
they won't burn. Okay, great. Let's go make some guacamole. So we've done the hard hit, and you can probably see uh, we have three quesadillas, and I've got the tostada here that we made earlier as well, some of the chicken and our chips. Uh, we're going to make some guacamole. This is pretty easy and pretty fun. Uh, I love guacamole. Um, so <laughs> these are Haas avocados. We're going to use these. Uh, these are from Mexico. They're pretty small, so we're going to use three of them today. Uh, you can use typically two larger avocados, but try to only get these guys, and you'll you'll notice that they have a darker brown skin. If you get an avocado that's really bright green, it's not right. So this is how we do this. I don't know if you've ever seen this on a show before, but here we go. So we take our knife, we go straight down, and then we go straight down the other side. All right, just like that, just run it around, and you can feel that pit because these are basically giant olives okay twist pop out next thing knife okay in <laughs> you have to make sure you get it in far enough otherwise it's going to split on you so in twist pop it out real easy just like that now this all right so i'm going to finish these guys up and go through it here pretty quick. Uh, here's the ingredients, just to run it down. Fresno chili pepper. This is uh, basically a ripe jalapeno. It's pretty It's pretty mild, though. It's not terrible. I'm going to use one of these. Uh, a lime, the juice of one or two limes, depending on how big your avocados are and how much you need. And the lime juice does help prevent browning. Uh, we have a Vidalia onion here. You could use any sweet onion or a Mexican onion, like a Mayan sweet, something like that. I have got my magic dust mix. That's the only seasoning we're going to do, and a little bit of salt. And I've got some cilantro and uh, some chives. To about 10% of the population, cilantro tastes like hand soap. If it tastes like that to you, don't put it in. Really easy. All right, so I'm going to get going here, and I will see you in a bit. And there we go. All right, so finally, <laughs> it's a boil. Okay, so that's our guacamole. Now that's all we're gonna need for this. Okay, so now we get to have some fun. Uh, here's how we're gonna make our margarita today. I've got my glass here, and I've got my lime. Now this surface that I've got here isn't ideal for cutting on because it's stainless steel. So what I'm going to bring out is something I generally don't use, and that's a silicone board. Now the reason I'm using a silicone board today for this is because this goes in the dishwasher, it's really easy to clean, and I don't want to take up too much space to get my wood board. That's a damp cloth that goes underneath it so it doesn't spill, right? Now we're just going to get our metal our knife out, which we've cleaned. You know, these are different knives today. <laughs> My help door set. So what we want to do is get our lime. We need the juice of probably three or four. The problem is we don't know that just yet. So we got our lime. 
Okay? That's two limes, and we have an orange. Now the orange is interesting because in typical tequila fat, in typical um, margarita fashion, margaritas were like an accident. They're descended of a drink called the sidecar, which was a whiskey drink, uh, like a whiskey sour almost. And I think somebody probably, some bartender one night decided that uh, they didn't have the ingredients, so they threw in the tequila and the drunk person didn't even notice. But today what we're going to do is fix the margarita. So the first thing we have to do though, if you like a salt rimmed glass, I've got a bowl of salt here. If you don't have one of those fancy little, you know, cup things for a glass, don't worry about it. Just use a bowl. It fits your glass. Okay. So what I need to do now is cut another lime for garnish. It's the end, pretty easy. Just quarter it. You know, no big deal. And this guy here. Okay. And when you quarter, when you prep limes for service, it's always good to take a little, um, little slice like that, because that way it goes around your glass really easily, and it sticks there. Okay. So I got my glass lined with lime juice, and now all I'm going to do is stick it in my salt, and voila, salt in the glass. Okay, pretty easy, right? So I'm going to take my ice here. I've got a cocktail picker full of ice. I'm going to put some of this ice into my glass to serve for later. The rest of this we're going to use to make our mix. So our mix is going to be lime juice. Now I like just lime, but a lot of people, you know, they don't like that. So we're going to go ahead and squeeze these guys. If you have a juicer, this would be the time to do it. <laughs> time to use it. Um, so one, this guy's a little bit stubborn today. So the juice of at least two limes is what you're going to need. Okay. And don't worry about the oranges have, have seeds and stuff. Don't worry about that because you got a strainer here. Another half here. All right, now that we've done that, we've got our half orange here. Now we don't need a lot of orange juice. We just need a little. So enough of this is half squeeze orange. You see that? It's about half an ounce, right? Not a lot. Okay, and then you can use the rest of that for garnish. Okay, so we've got our mix. Now you need your liquor, right? Well, actually you need your seasoning first. <laughs> We're gonna put a pinch of salt in here. Just that, just a pinch. It's gonna help it actually get cool, cold and uh, blend it better. You know, when you use uh, salt to make ice cream. Um, so this is sugar-free uh, coffee sweetener, simple syrup. You can make simple syrup, it's just equal parts water and uh, sugar that you cook down. But this is artificially sweetened and it's much sweeter. Uh, plus it lasts a long time, it's pretty cheap. This, I think this was like $6. And it's, uh, it's, a, it's 750 milliliters. This will go a long way. And you can find these in most coffee aisles in most supermarkets. So, this is going to be, conveniently, this is going to be okay, half an ounce all right, of that, just to give it a little sweetness. And now this uh, is what we're going to be using for tequila today. This is Long Island Iced Tea Mix. This has tequila, rum, vodka, gin, and triple sec in it. And um, the reason I'm using this is I don't have any tequila right now, but also with a margarita, the tequila you put in it really doesn't matter. The mix is the most important thing. A Blanco unaged tequila is perfectly fine, and this gives you a lot of interesting notes um, that you wouldn't ordinarily get. Don't waste your money on like a Reposado or an Añejo tequila or anything super expensive. It's not worth it for margaritas. So here we go. This is going to be one ounce of this. All right, now. We shake. Okay. Just 10 seconds for our drink. Should have measured that right, but I think I did. All right, and perfect. Okay, so my eight ounce glass, six of it, perfect. Now we're just gonna take our little lime that and I will see you 
at the table when we eat all of this. I hope you've enjoyed today's impromptu Cinco de Mayo celebration in this era of quarantine. <laughs> Let's take a bite of everything here. I'm going to do some chips into the guacamole. Mmm. Okay. I'll have this up on the website tonight. Those chips are better than anything you will ever get out of a bag in a store. I promise you that. Let's have some of our tostada here. <clears throat> oh, let's see. It's crispy. Screw it, I'm gonna eat this with my hand. Mmm, delicious. Okay. So what I said before about making sure that chicken is a little undercooked coming off the grill, that's why. Mmm, that margarita's fucking perfect. <laughs> Excuse my, <laughs> yeah, I should flip that. <laughs> what do you think, Gracie? Huh? So, yeah trick is you know make sure that chicken's just a smidge underdone because that way it'll be done perfectly when you put it on your plate and get it saved up because remember it continues to cook all right guys thank you so much for tuning in i hope you enjoy this little episode and have yourself a wonderful day